This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys, my name is Mike Hermes and welcome to my channel. Well guys, today we're going to do a modeling tutorial on how to properly create a glass of wine. Now, why do I say properly? Because I've seen a bunch of videos out there using different techniques and to be honest, I think a few elements are missing. If you want to create a realistic glass, there are a couple of things you need to keep in mind and also for the creation of your fluid. Okay, so that said, let's jump into the tutorial and have some fun. Here we go. Okay, guys, here we go. So I loaded up our reference image and that said, let's get started with our model. So we're going to start with a, a polygon cylinder. We're going to pull that out a little bit and we're going to hit control A to hit our attribute editor. And we're going to go in and we're going to set caps to four. That's fine. And then we don't really need the top here. So we're going to right click, go to face and we are going to click and shift double click. And then we're going to hit shift period to increase selection and hit control delete to get rid of that. So that's all good. Then we're gonna right click, go to object mode. We're gonna select that, switch views to our front view. And now we can check whether our image is uh, exactly in the middle and it's not. So we're gonna hit W, we're gonna move that over a little bit. Then we're gonna take our object, pull that down to the base. F to zoom in. We're going to hit R to scale that guy out until we have the correct width of the base. And we're going to turn on our X-ray. And then we're going to hit W and bring that up. Okay. Now, before we get into anything else, a common mistake made is that the foot or the base of the glass is completely flat, which is not the case with a regular wine glass. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and go to edge. And we're going to select this entire edge and this one and this one. We're going to hit W to raise that up just slightly. Don't go nuts on that. Reselect these two. Bring it up a bit more. And then take that one at the end and bring that up a bit more. And then we have to take that single vertex down here. This guy. And from this point of view, we're going to need to bring that up as well. And actually, we can bring it up a lot more, as you can see. So I'll bring that one up to, let's say, about here. We'll right click, go to edge, take that edge. And we are going to smooth this out. So that's going to look okay. You always have to do a bit of an estimate because you have to anticipate what will happen once smooth. But this is okay. Then we're going to right click, get a vertex, and drag select that top vertex row all the way. And we're going to bring that down to about there. Okay, let's have a look from this view. That's okay. Then we're going to right click, get an edge. We're going to select that entire edge. There we go. And we're going to hit Control E to extrude. Then we're going to hit W to move that up. We're going to hit R to scale it in. And it's a bit hard to see from this point of view, but we'll get there. So bring that in quite a bit. Then we're going to hit G to repeat, W to pull up. And we're going to start to repeat that process as we move up try to establish that flow that you want for the base of that glass g to repeat w to pull up and once again as you do that try to keep it as symmetrical as possible so g to repeat w to pull up and one of the reasons we do it this way is that if you look at your glass you have a section that looks like solid glass G to repeat, W to pull up, and a section that is not solid glass. And from a refraction standpoint, that looks quite different, okay? G to repeat, W to pull up, R to scale in, 
g to repeat, w to pull up, r to scale in just slightly, g to repeat, w to pull up. I'm not going to keep on repeating that. So just so you know, I believe in repetition, but not if you do something 30 times. So we're just going to continue that process. Okay, what the heck, I'll say it one more time. G to repeat last command, W to pull that up, and R to scale out. Okay. Now we're going to move into the glass section, if you will, and especially here, we're going to keep that a little bit lower. Okay, I'll try to speed it up a little bit. So we can get to the interesting part of what I mean by properly. Bring it in a little bit right there. G to repeat, W to pull up. R to scale in. This is where we are so far. We haven't smoothed anything yet. But if you look closely, like I said before, the base here looks more like solid glass. But also, if you look at this curve here in the glass, this glass is much thicker than the rest of it. So this is quite thin, and this is thicker down here. And if you incorporate that into your model, then the glass will look much more realistic, okay? So now for the tricky part, what we need to do to establish that is to go inside the glass and then model downwards to create that interior okay so we're going to need to go to our perspective view and we're at the top pretty much okay <clears throat> excuse me so we're going to hit Control e to extrude we're going to tweak the thickness inward uh, to let's say Minus 0 0.01. Let's give that a try and have a look. That is not very much. So let's do minus 0 0.03. Yeah, that's probably a little bit better. Okay, so that's good. Then we're going to hit uh, G to repeat last command. We're going to hit W to move that down. There we go. And then we have the faces and the normals for the faces looking okay. And now we can start to go back into this view, which is a bit tricky. And we're going to hit W to bring that down. And we're going to try to kind of keep the same um, flow as far as our edges are concerned. So I'm going to hit that to scale that out. And if we match up with the existing edges as much as possible, you should get a nice even flow. Okay, so G to repeat last command, W to pull down, and R to scale out. G to repeat last command, W to pull down. And you can see that these are not matching here. So for that reason, we're going to hit R and scale that out to get that as close as possible. G to repeat, W to pull down. Now we need to keep our glass thickness. Uh, pay attention to that. Okay. 
So here we're going to slightly start to bring that in. G to repeat, W to pull down. And we are going to scale it, but not as much. Because like I said, we're going to start to take that thickness in. G to repeat, W to pull down. And now we're probably even going to start to pull that in a bit. G to repeat, W to pull down. And again, R to scale in even more so. GW, pull that down. And now we're really getting into that part where the glass is nice and thick. GW, bring that down. And let's keep on going here. Hit R to scale that in. GW, bring that down. And now we're getting to a point where actually we're going to hit W to bring that up. And we're going to add a little bit more edge loops here. So we're going to hit R to scale that in. And look at that flow right here. Okay. G to repeat, W to pull down. And R to scale in. G to repeat, W to pull down. And R to scale in. And we're going to try to create our base there. So GW, one more. Almost there. One more. And at that point, we're going to check from this view. And we're going to do a quick preview smooth. So right click object mode, hit three which looks nice. And you see that we have that hole in there. So we're going to hit one to go back. We're going to right click at an edge. And we're going to double click on the entire edge and go to mesh and fill hole. Now that is going to be a bit flat, I guess. So we're going to select it, hit three to preview smooth and see how that looks. It looks okay, but we do have a huge end gone right there. So that's what we need to address, but that's fine. What we're going to do is we're going to actually smooth the glass instead of preview smooth. So we're going to hit one to go back. Just checking our lines here. Then we're going to go into mesh and smooth to actually smooth. This is not for a game engine or anything like that. So what we can do is, uh, yeah, keep this. This is fine. And then we're going to go in, select it and go to mesh and clean up. And what we want is faces with more than four sides. So when we hit clean up, it should now have, let's see. Well, actually these are uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, fine. They're four sided. So we shouldn't have a problem there. Okay. Now let's see if our glass looks okay. And in my opinion, it does. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create fluid for our object here, uh, which is a bit tricky. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click at a face. And I'm going to select that inner face row only. Hit shift period to increase that selection taking too much on the top there so I don't want that so we'll start over we'll start somewhere around here maybe here okay so I'm gonna hit shift period to increase that I want that bottom row obviously and I want to increase that upwards and let's see how far upwards I want that to be so let's hit four for wireframe mode I'll hit shift period to go up that's probably okay. All right. Then we're going to go to, uh, let's see, this one I need to look for because, uh, okay, 
duplicate faces. All right, let's hit duplicate. Let's hit W to see if that worked. Come on. I don't use this very often, so. Yeah, there you go. Excellent. Okay. So that's going to be my fluid, but as you can see, the uh, normals are inside out. Okay. So I got this guy. I'm going to go uh, to, uh, let's see, mesh display. I'm always trying to figure out where this stuff is at. Um, where do you go? Reverse. Okay. So I'm reversing my normals. This is good. Then I'm going to right click at an edge. I'm going to select the entire top edge and go to mesh and fill hole. And then once again, I now have an object where the top is one huge end gone. So I'm going to go to mesh and clean up, hit clean up. And now I have a number of uh, triangles, which is okay. Uh, triangles are not necessarily bad. Um, even in a, an animation, what you want to avoid is anything with more than four faces. Okay. All right, so we got this guy. We're gonna right click. We're gonna push this guy back in position. From that view, he's good. From this view, have to zoom in. Four for wireframe mode. We're gonna hold down X to snap it into place. Let's have a final check here. That should all look okay. So I'm gonna take my reference image. I'm gonna delete that. And this is my glass with my fluid. Okay. Now I'm going to do a quick color ID map. So I'm going to select my glass, right click, assign new material, and we'll do a simple Lambert. And we'll just give that any other color, it doesn't really matter. And I'll take my wine here and I'll assign new material. I'll do another Lambert and let's make that, I don't know, blue. That's fine. So this is my object that I can now export. So I'm going to select all of it. I'm going to go to edit, delete by type history. I'm going to go to modify and freeze transformations. And now I can go and export selection. I'm going to export this as an OBJ. I'll hit export selection. I'm going to save it out of my desktop and I'll call this wine glass and export that. Now we're going to texture, light and render this in Keyshot. Uh, however, if you do not have Keyshot, what you can do to get a good result in Maya is to use the uh, MIA Material X preset. I'll quickly show you before we jump into, um, jump into Keyshot. You select your glass, you're going to right click, assign new material. You're going to go to uh, MIA. It's not showing up, so it looks like my mental ray plugin is not loaded, and you could run into that same problem. So what you do then is you go up to uh, Windows, Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager, and you search for the Maya to Mental Ray MLL, this guy. Now, when I select that, it loads up my mental ray materials and allows me to apply them. Okay, we'll just give that a sec. There you go. So now if I assign a new material and I type in MIA material X, you can go into the material tab, into the presets, and then you have all sorts of glass that you can choose from, glass solid, glass thick, and so forth. And for the fluid itself, you could use a blend, okay? You need to set up caustics and all that neat stuff in the mental ray. But as I said, I'm going to use Keyshot. So with that said, let's jump into Keyshot. Here we go. All right, guys, we're in uh, Keyshot. And what we're going to do is we're going to load up our model. So we're going to go to File, Import. Here's my wine glass. I'm going to open that and just uh, hit Default, hit Import. 
And here you have our model with our color ID. Okay, so we did blue for the glass and uh, no blue for the uh, wine and yellow for the glass. And in our material tab, we're going to start to add uh, glass. And we are going to go with clear glass, refractive. And we'll take this glass right here. We're going to left click and drag and drop that on top of our glass here. Looks all right. And then what's neat about Keyshot is that uh, Keyshot has some presets for fluid, which is very nice. So we're going to go to liquids and we're going to do, let's see, I think this is a Chardonnay or something like that. Yep. We're going to drag that onto our material. And even without tweaking any settings at all, you can see a distinct difference in our model. Because if we zoom in, you can see that the light reacts different in this area here because the glass is thicker in that part. The stem of the glass, especially here, looks much more solid. And if you look at the base of your glass, you can see that whole light effect going on down there because of us bringing up those edges. Okay, so let's tweak this a little bit just to make it look nice. What we're going to do is we're going to go to our background. We'll take a white solid background. There we go. Then we're going to go into our environment. Let's see what kind of light we want to have going on here. Let's try interior. And this is always a huge thing, especially with, um, with this kind of stuff. So just look to see what looks best. This gives us a nice glow here and we're just going through the paces to see what you like best and you know for most part it's really a personal preference this kind of pops nicely um, not too much perfection going on there so I'm gonna go in to uh, let's see lighting I'm gonna turn on caustics okay then let's see ground illumination i want that um global illumination and we're going to do the interior mode actually we're not going to do the interior mode because that doesn't look too great i had one here i believe that i liked very much i'm not sure whether it was this one or this one a little bit too much shading going on there yeah, this is actually very nice. Okay, so now that we have this, uh, let's see, we are gonna go and check some settings here. Okay, we're looking at the distance for our object. Uh, let's see, just trying to see whether I'm satisfied with this setting here. Yeah, that looks okay. Depth of field is usually a pretty cool effect, but we need to set this up correctly. No, we're not gonna do that. That's gonna take a lot of time to get it right, and you know, that's not the point of this tutorial. So this looks okay so far. Uh, let's see, we got this going on now. Uh, as far as the effect is concerned, um, I like uh, a vignette, which kind of brings in these corners, as you can see, which I think is pretty cool. We can change that color if we like, make it a little bit rosé color, but in this case, because of the wine that we chose, we'll do something like that. Okay. Uh, Blooming, I'm not too big of a fan of that, so I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. That looks all right. Let's see, we looked at that, lighting. Um, this is kind of important because we're dealing with fluids and glass. So I want the number of ray bounces to be high enough. I definitely want the shadow quality to be good. So let's bring that up. Uh, I'm still going to leave that interior mode off though. I'm not too thrilled about that. Uh, let's see, we dealt with this. I'm just going to see if we can um, tweak this a little bit. Uh, let's see. I want ground reflections going on. 
again because of the uh, the glass and the, the fluid so that's all good uh, let's see and that is all set all right so what we're gonna do is I am gonna change the angle just slightly and there we go we're gonna go to our render settings just gonna check that color here for a sec guys not sure I'm thrilled about that green okay that's that and then we're gonna go into our material tab hang on hang on hang on hang on um, I hit control Z and because I did that it change this back sorry about that so it's good so now what I was uh, wondering is whether it would be cool to see if we can tweak this color a bit Let's do a very dark red. Trying to see the best way to get that effect. And whether we want to keep this or not. But anyway, I'm not gonna keep this, but this shows you that you are able to tweak that, okay? So uh, all said and done, let's uh, go in and render this. So we're gonna go into our render tab uh, let's see maximum samples uh, all good I'm gonna go to my output I'm gonna call this wine glass and I'm gonna save it on my desktop and there we go let's do um, let's see it's probably a preset here yeah we'll do that 100 dpi all good okay so i'm going to pause the video uh, the video render this out and see you guys in a bit all right guys well here's our end result and uh yeah i'm happy with it i think it looks okay so hopefully this will help you guys out and if you like my video please hit that like button subscribe for more videos in the future and that said thank you guys for watching thanks for your support and see you guys next time bye